Welcome back to the second video in our series of wet and wet fun projects. If you're looking for a stress-free way to practice your wet and wet techniques, you've come to the right place. We are doing a series of watercolor tutorials all about the wet and wet technique. If you haven't already watched the pumpkin tutorial from last week, go ahead and check that one out after this video. As you saw in the thumbnail, today we're going to be painting clouds using the wet and wet technique. Materials you'll need for this tutorial are some watercolor paper. I'll be using my Fabriano Artistico 140 pound cold pressed cotton watercolor paper on a block. It's five by seven inches. I love to use blocks, especially for wet and wet because the sides are glued down so the paper doesn't warp and buckle while you're working. And then when you're all finished, there is one little corner of the block that is not glued down so you can easily remove your finished painting. I also have a heat tool. This is something I got on Amazon. I always use it on the lowest setting. And I have my Magello watercolor palette with 18 colors. Today we're just gonna be using three colors, all by Daniel Smith. I'll be using burnt sienna, indigo, and ultramarine blue and make sure you have a water jar and a sponge or paper towel for blotting. I always soak my sponge ahead of time and then squeeze out the excess water so it's just damp and it's a great way to control how much water is in your brush. An essential thing for the wet and wet technique. And my brush today is my silver black velvet size 10 round brush. This is a blend of synthetic bristles and squirrel hair and it's just a wonderful brush. I love these. Okay start out by spritzing your paints that you intend to use for this project. And speaking of spritzing, a great way to wet your whole surface is to just spray it with a spray bottle. So this actually works a little bit faster than using your brush. And another great method for wetting your surface is using a natural sponge. So today I'm gonna go ahead and start with the spray bottle. We'll use both methods, why not? And then I'm gonna take my sponge and soak it with clear water and just use that to spread the water around on the paper. Now the fun thing about doing the wet and wet technique on an entire surface is that you don't have to work around little details. Now for the most effective cloud paintings, you do want to have some shapes to grab onto. You don't want to just blob all over the place and hope it works out. So be intentional about where you place your darker values and your lighter values and have some idea of the shapes that you want to create before going into the project. I am including a reference photo. This is just one of my own photos that I snapped on my iPhone. You can easily take photos anywhere you go. It doesn't have to even be a beautiful setting around you. Just look up. All right, so you should have a glossy surface. I'm gonna show you up close. It's nice and shiny. That means it's ready to take my paint. And if you live in a dry environment like I do, where your paper maybe dries out a little too fast, it doesn't hurt to go over it a second time once it's soaked in that first time. And just add another layer of water, let that soak, and then get ready to start adding paint. This is the fun part. So in my photo, I have a dark cloud over here in the upper right corner, another dark cloud over here, and then some more blue sky down lower. And the sun is kind of peeking through those clouds. We're gonna try and see if we can capture that now to keep my paint from just kind of exploding all over the place, I have to control how much water is in my brush. So I want to mix up a creamy mix of colors. I'm gonna combine my ultramarine and indigo, and that's super dark. So I don't know if I want it that dark. I'm gonna start a second palette over here and mix in some ultramarine for more of a neutral gray tone. Adding a little bit of water to dilute it somewhat. And then if you don't want it to be super dark, but you still wanna be creamy with your paint consistency so it doesn't explode, blot the ferrule of your brush on your sponge or paper towel and that will remove any excess water from your brush. Then you can go in and you can see how the flow is really nice. It's spreading out beautifully, but it's not out of control. That's exactly what I want. So watching for where you want your sunshine to be coming through, you know, leave a couple little gaps where you have some sun coming through that heavy cloud cover but you wanna work quickly while your paper is still wet to get these major shapes in. So I'm just using a squiggling motion of the brush. I love painting clouds because you know what? You can just move your brush however and it really doesn't matter. And then you can take even darker paint while it's still wet and drop that in the heaviest part of the cloud so it really looks like a shadow in the cloud. Some very dark, ominous storm clouds. Then you can take that same gray and start dropping in some other clouds down here. Again, if you want it to be a little lighter, take some of your paint, dip your brush in the water and remove the excess water in your sponge. And if you want it to be a darker cloud, 
grab more thick paint, even directly from your palette, that's totally fine. But you can see I'm leaving some gaps between my clouds so that I actually have some interesting shapes here. Really important to design your composition in a pleasing way and don't just hope that it works out. Now I'm rinsing some of that dark paint out and blotting on my sponge. Now you can see how much lighter my values are. But I can still work with my wet on wet, although my paper is already starting to dry a little bit, I'm noticing. So we may need to go in with a second layer, let this dry, and try it again as your paper dries and doesn't look shiny anymore. You're starting to reach what we call the danger zone, which is where your paint may begin to push aside any of the paint that's underneath. Now, I haven't painted this area yet, so I don't have to worry about the danger of pushing aside the paint. So I can just go in and kind of squeeze this in between those clouds, and I'm leaving little rims of light around my clouds. So it's giving it that backlit effect with the sunlight streaming through. And then here at the bottom, I'm gonna use more of my pure ultramarine. Still kind of blotting with my brush so that it creates the effect of those soft clouds. But yeah, I want that backlit effect around the clouds. And already, boom, one layer, wet and wet, super soft edges. This is the best technique, you all. It works so well. And when you're using high quality paper, you can do multiple layers like this. Now we have definitely reached the danger zone. I'll show you up close how you can see the, pa the paper has kind of this matte look to it. It's dried so much now that if we were to try to add more layers into this dark cloud, you'd potentially ruin it because it could either lift some of the color out or push aside the paint that's starting to dry on the surface, creating cauliflowers. So leave it alone. And if you want to speed up the drying process, this is your opportunity to use your heat tool or hair dryer. All right, once your surface is bone dry, you can safely go in with a second layer of wet on wet. Once again, you can use your spray bottle, or you can use your sponge, or you can use your brush. Whatever method you choose to re-wet it, you need to be careful not to do any scrubbing, or you may lift the paint that's already on the surface. I'm gonna use my spray bottle, and I'm actually just gonna watch out for that sunshiny spot right there. And then I'm gonna take my sponge and really, really soak the paper again everywhere except where my sunshine is coming through. I want the sunspot to be the brightest area in the whole painting, and right now I have a couple of other spots that are competing with that. So I'm just using a blotting motion with my sponge, letting that soak in. Okay, so now we're ready to do a second layer of wet on wet. We can add more dark shadows in those clouds or other colors if you want. You could even push in some quinacridone rose or some purples if they're just too gray for you. I really like the simplicity of the limited palette here. So I'm gonna stick with my ultramarine and burnt sienna and indigo. Now I'm mixing up a little more burnt sienna in the mix here so it creates almost this brown color. And again, removing my excess water with the ferrule of my brush on my sponge. And then again, I can go in and just have fun blotting in some darker shadows in my clouds. I want to make them look even heavier. So mixing up creamy, thick paint will yield the best results so that your paint doesn't flow too fast. The more pigment you have, on your wet surface, the slower it's gonna flow. The more water you mix in, the faster it'll flow. So the sooner you can start to grasp this kind of wetness level of the paper versus the wetness of your brush, the easier this technique will get. So I'm balancing out that more of a neutral gray over on this side and starting to add some little complexities to the clouds. really watching out for my sunshine right here. And let's add another dark shadow to this one so it doesn't feel left out. And you can color over the top of your 
brightest areas with a light, light value. Again, I'm drawing my brush on my sponge so I don't introduce any extra water. This area, though, is starting to dry out on me, so it's not moving as smoothly as I'd like it to. That's okay, just do your best. Close to the sunshine right here, if you wanna create a little bit of a harder edge where the cloud is coming in front of it, like you see in the reference photo, you can certainly do that. This area of the paper is dry, so if you put some paint right next to that, it's gonna be a hard edge. And you know, some of the best paintings have a combination of hard and soft edges. I think giving variety to your edges will yield the best results if you want your painting to look interesting, to really draw your viewer in. So a little bit of a hard edge there. And then I'm gonna darken up here at the bottom so it's not competing with my brightest bright, which is right at the top there. I think that helps a lot. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit more ultramarine Putting it in at the bottom to brighten up my blue down here. For some color variety, yes. All right, I think that's what it needed. Just a second layer and we're good to go. So let's remove our tape and see how we did. Such fun. If you loved this bite-sized paint project that was just under 15 minutes, you're gonna love the daily challenges. Check out my Watercolor Mastery membership where you get five daily challenges a week so that you can be painting every single day and really working on these techniques. Log enough brush miles and the wet and wet technique will become intuitive. You'll just know exactly what to do. You'll know how your paper's gonna respond, how your brushes are gonna respond, and it's just gonna be a lot more natural for you. So I'll leave a link in the description to the Watercolor Mastery membership. I hope you'll check it out. In the meantime, check out that pumpkin tutorial from last week and I'll see you over there.